One of the most powerful ideas in economics is that of market failure. That's because it considers what happens when the market mechanism, which is this venerated idea, fails to achieve the outcome that's optimal for society, and when Adam Smith's invisible hand breaks down. On the surface, it looks much like the standard demand and supply model that you're all familiar with. Where it differs is that it realises that the private costs associated with supplying a good aren't always equal to the cost to society. Thus we have an extra curve representing the social marginal costs. Demand, in the same way, is renamed private marginal benefits and runs in parallel with a social benefits curve. These twin curves come into play when there is an externality in the market, an effect on third parties arising from production or consumption of that good or service. Merit goods have positive externalities, and demerit goods have negative ones. Because the externality is not factored into the market price, merit goods like education are undersupplied by the market, and demerit goods like cigarettes are oversupplied. Almost any global issue can be looked at through the lens of market failure. We bulldoze mangroves to farm shrimp in Indonesia, but this increases erosion and storm damage. We deforest the Amazon to reclaim lumber and farmland, but this worsens droughts by eliminating rain-producing foliage. We dredge the Great Barrier Reef to let gas ships through, but this decimates biodiversity. All of these are negative externalities, where firms reduce the welfare of society through their actions. It seems that to create any meaningful improvements in global sustainability, we need firms to be interested in not just their own private welfare, but the welfare of society. Imagine if this wasn't the case, if firms automatically counted social costs and benefits as their own. To achieve this, the intangible concept of social welfare would need to be given a very real monetary value. In terms of our diagram, this would mean that the private cost curves were, by design, equal to the social cost curves, that private marginal benefits become inseparable from the social marginal benefits. Companies would feel social costs as their own and produce accordingly. Externalities would cease to exist. This is green economics, reducing the value of ecosystems into a cash figure and then incorporating that into the mainstream economy. Let's go to an example. Deforestation of the Uakrama rainforest in Guyana, South America. Clearly, the choice to log ancient rainforest is only based on a weighing up of private costs and benefits. For an individual, the land will earn more profits as a farm than as a jungle. But if you include the social benefits in that analysis, the opposite is true. While the farm generates enough income for one household, the rainforest provides thousands of dollars worth of services to the community from soaking up CO2 and generating rainfall to providing a habitat for indigenous species. But because the landowner doesn't consider these, he chooses to use the land as a farm. The green economic solution to this would be to simply make firms pay for using the services provided by the rainforest. That way, the rainforest would earn more income for the owner than the farm would, and it wouldn't be torn down. But there are two problems with this idea. The first is the question of what price to sell them for. How much, for example, are the erosion-preventing properties of a rainforest worth? Economists know the answer to this thanks to a body known as TEEB, the Economics of Ecosystems and Biodiversity, which was set up by the UN in 2007. For instance, we know from their study that mangroves that protect the Indonesian coastline from tsunamis are worth around $215,349 per hectare. Coral reefs, mostly due to their tourism value, are worth around 1.2 million. And interestingly, a hectare of rainforest like the Uakrama is only valued at 24,000 or so, whereas farmland, even less valuable, checks in at 10 grand for the same area. So we know more or less how much ecosystems are worth in monetary terms. The other decidedly more tricky problem is getting firms to pay for using them. In reality, this means getting a profit-driven company to pay for using, say, the rainfall generated by the Iwakrama forest when they can freely access it regardless of whether they choose to pay up. Sound preposterous? Well, it is. Naturally occurring services are common access goods, which means that they are non-excludable. You can't stop people from accessing them. Why would any self-respecting individual choose to pay for something that they can get for free? 
That, however, hasn't stopped one firm from trying to market such ecosystem services. Canopy Capital is a British company that has bought the rights to market the Uakurama rainforest. If you're interested, they'll sell you any number of rainforest utilities. All of these are services that the rainforest supplies to the world, and putting a price on them means that from a commercial standpoint, the rainforest is more valuable alive than dead. Canopy Capital, however, has yet to make a single sale. We don't have a solution to this. Are profit-driven firms ever going to pay for a common access resource they can get for free? No, of course not. But if we are to solve massive economic challenges like climate change, we might just need to find a different answer to that question.